um, it's going to look kind of big when you get it, but it's because they have like, like here's this huge diagram that goes with this problem type of thing. So don't, it's not, it's not as long as you think. And there's actually a whole half page that we get a skip because it wasn't taught. Yeah. Can't, can't hold your t teacher accountable. All right. So I'm on page 213. So give me an honest look at page 213. And let me know if there's any of those that I could help you with. Number four, you select three people at random. That one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, we're on page 213 just going through some stuff. Just getting our review ready for tomorrow. Oh, and remember, you get a full sheet of paper, whatever you want to write on it. All right. You select three people at random. <clears throat> Probability that we're all born the same day. You know what? That's uh, that's the birthday problem. We can skip it. I will not have it on the test tomorrow. Sorry about that. I should have read it before I put anything down. Everything else are one, two, and three okay? Like two C, it doesn't matter if it goes heads then tails then tails. You know, it's it's the same work no matter what. So we're good on that page? Everyone's happy? Content? We can come back to it if you find something. Uh, let's go to page 214. Let's see. Um, show calculation. Left-handed, right-handed. Create one-third tickets price. Tickets. Okay. Coin toss. <laughs> Bless you. Eight marbles in a bag. And then we're a cherry. Are there any of those on page 214 that I could help you with? I'll give you extra guidance on. <clears throat> Number eight? You got it. All right. Number eight. There are eight marbles in a bag. So we have three green, three blue. And two yellow. So the yellow is going to be harder to see, but we'll deal with it. Okay. So basically, those are my marbles. I'm going to. I'm not going to try not to lose my marbles. I'm going to put those in a bag that I can't see. I'm going to shake up the bag so it's all mixed up, and then I'm going to reach into the bag without looking at it and see if, what types of things I could draw out. Okay. Okay. So one thing that we have to recognize is we have there's eight marbles total. Okay. Hey guys. We're on page 214. So we are going to take out we're going to take out two marbles at random. Show the calculation at each. Okay, so um, we're going to take out two marbles. So does the first marble know what marble got pulled out, and the next one would know? No. Uh -uh. All right, so we're going to pull out two marbles. Okay, so that, that to me, when it says two marbles, you're reaching in the bag, and a marble would probably be easy to have two of them pinched in your fingers, right? Does that make sense? So, it doesn't say that we're doing, let's assume we're doing it one at a time, and I'm not replacing. So I'm going to say not replace first. So the probability that I were to draw both yellow, 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 it's going to be, I have two out of eight. And if I'm not replacing, that means I only have seven marbles left. That means I have one out, one more yellow left in there. Okay. And I'm going to show this if we did replacement as well, just so you have that kind of thing. Um, we can... We can reduce if you would like, but it's not necessary. So this would be a 2 out of 56 or a 1 out of 28. Either one of those answers would be fine. Now, let's say we do a replacement, okay? Meaning we reach in the bag, we pull out a marble, make note of it, put it back in, shuffle it back up, and there's so there's eight marbles both. So if we wanted to do probability of yellow and yellow where we were replacing, marbles, 
that's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be 2 out of 8 times 2 out of 8. So that's 4 out of 64. Or I could reduce that to um, 1 out of 16. Okay, and it's, again, it's your choice. Um, so please know the difference between replacement and not replacement. Does that make sense how I explained it? And again, I was doing it that way because I wasn't sure what they were doing. But then, so that this is how you would do A if you had replacement. And then I'm going to try B up here. We're going to do probability of a blue, then green. So not replace. Probability of a blue would be 3 out of 8. Um, and then green would be 3 out of 7. So that's going to give me a 9 out of 56. If I did replacement, it would be 3 out of 8 times 3 out of 8, which would be 9 out of 64. Okay? <coughs> so the <coughs> probability changes a little bit. It becomes easier to grab that second marble if you did not replace. Did that answer the question okay for you? And again, we'll make sure on the test tomorrow or the quiz tomorrow. If it doesn't, if it says replacement or not, I will. Uh, I'll just tell you. You know, hey, you know, number seven. Make sure you do replacement, meaning you're putting it back in. Okay. All right. Are we everything else on? Did anyone find anything on 213 or 214 other that I could work out, help you out? Number five. According to research, 10% of the population is left-handed. You select eight people at random, find that. Okay. So number five, 10% are lefties. These are left hand. Okay. We're on 213, 214. Um, we're going to select eight people, meaning I walk into, I walk into Bronco Stadium, that, and let's say it's full, and I randomly pick eight people. I just grab eight people at random and bring them outside. What's the probability that all eight of them are left-handed? So because I'm doing that, I'm going to go 0.10, which is 10%, and I'm going to raise it to the 8th power. So whatever that comes out to on a calculator would be um, your answer. Let's see. Do I have a... So let's do this. Let me just... Uh, we'll do it on Desmos because we, we know our buddy Desmos. So if you wanted to do this on, on Desmos, or obviously you have a calculator you could use, but you could go 0.1 raised to the 8th power. So it becomes 1 times 10 to the negative 8, or 0.00000001. So. Oh, feeling blessed. Thank you. And then if we wanted to find the probability that they, that, all are not left-handed. It's this same work here, but I'm going to go 1 minus 0 0.10 raised to the 8th. And again, whatever that comes out to. Hey. Blow it up. Okay, and again, the decimals will work real easy on that. So if you went uh, 1 minus 0 0.10 raised to the 8th. So... We have a 99.99% chance that they're all not left-handed. So a pretty good chance. Okay? And notice I'm using just this as a calculator on decimals. No, there's no graphing that's taking place. And then letter C, at least one is left-handed. Let's not worry about C. I won't ask that on the test. So don't worry about C on number 5 on page 214. All right, we can incorporate 215 in as well. What kind of things on 215 could I help you with? Let's see. The contingency table is definite. 
uh, the Venn diagram. Both of those would be definite things that you could see on the um, quiz. What's up, Reed? Good to see you, buddy. Load up. Anything did you see on 215 or 214 or 213 that we haven't done yet? And that's not the birthday problem? Do you want me to work the contingency table? Or do you feel comfortable with that? Do you want me to work the Venn diagram? Do you want me to work both? We got time. Seven. Uh, let's see. At the start of every football game, a coin toss is done to determine which team will start with the ball. The winning team decides if they want to start on offense or defense. Suppose we are the team calling the coin toss and we wish to record what the coin lands on whether we won the toss or not. Okay. Um, so number seven is a coin toss. So you have either heads or tails. So that is my sample space, heads or tails. <clears throat> and then find, for letter B, find the probability the coin lands on heads or we win the toss. Okay, so we have two different outcomes, two different outcomes that could happen because we could pick tails and still win the, the coin toss. Okay, so the probability of heads is half. If we win the toss, regardless of what it is, so just multiply that and get you the one fourth. Letter C. Find the probability that we win the toss. Let's not worry about C. You won't see that on the quiz. Anything up through 215 that I can help you with? Or take it anywhere on all the rest, all the way up to 217? Let's see, just making sure. Um, don't worry about... Number 12, don't worry about... So 12 you can skip. <clears throat> 10? Yeah. That's the contingency table, right? Okay. So... Number 10, <clears throat> I guess that would be ages of people, soda, coffee, tea, water. Okay, so I think, I think we're talking about ages, so 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, and we're not worried about people that are 60 and older or under 20. And then we have soda coffee, tea, water, and then they give us this breakdown. We got 10, 11, 8, 9 for a total of 38 people there, uh, 8, 9, 9, 8, and that's 34. We're on pages like 215-ish, just reviewing stuff. T, we have 5, 2, 1, 3. For a total of 11. Water, we have 2375 for a total of 17. And then we have totals this way with 25, 25. Oh, 25 works on all. And so if I add down the column or add across the column, we're talking about 100 scenarios that take place. Okay, so for letter A, this is number 10. Um, what's the probability? that I picked somebody out of my entire group that likes soda. Okay, so my soda is 38 out of the 100. No need to reduce it. You're welcome to. You're welcome to put it as a decimal. You're welcome to put it as a percent or keep it as an unreduced fraction. Letter B. 
probability they like T and are in the 50 to 59 category. So we need both to take place. So I'm going to look at the T category, and I'm looking at 50 out of 59. So we have a 3 out of 100 chance that we pick. That's what these guys would be. Okay, so that's, you have all 100 people sitting there. You uh, grab three people, bring them outside. What's the chance they happen to be 50 to 59? And they also like T. You have a 3 in 100 chance of that taking place. <clears throat> all right. Letter C. <clears throat> Probability they like T or are in the 20 to 29 age group. Okay, so this is one we have to be cautious. The probability they like T is basically this column here, and they are in the 20 to 29 category, is this category here. Okay, we're still going to have out of 100, but what do I want to make sure I don't do in this case? Yeah, I don't want the five twice. So I'm going to go, basically it's, I have 10, 8, 5, 2, 2, 1, and 3. And just add these up. So 18, 18, 23, 25, 26, 27, 28, 31 out of 50. So don't count... This is, do what? Out of 100? Yeah, out of 100. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm losing it. <laughs> Does that make sense? So the big note on this one, and somehow don't double count. Okay, that's the main important thing not to do on that point, problem. Answer, or problem D says the probability they like T such that they are in the 20 to 29 category. 20, okay, this is the conditional probability. Yes, you will see this. Okay, so what you're going to basically do, think of this situation. You have all these 100 people sitting in a room, and I say to those 100 people sitting in the room, Hey, if you happen to be be in the group from 20 to 29, stay here. The rest of you go out in the hallway. So now I have just 25 people sitting there. So this is the 20 out of 29 category, so that's only 25 people. And then what's the probability that of those 25 people, they happen to like T? Yeah, 5 out of 25. Very good, very good. Okay, so be cautious on the conditional probability. Realize this becomes the denominator. And that could be a row or a column total. Does that make sense? I mean, we could say, what's the probability I pick someone in, from age 20 to 29 such that they like T? So that would mean that my denominator would be 11 in that case, and then in the 29th, so 5 out of 11. Okay? So just be cautious on that. That's an that's a, a easy place that people could make an error. And, and then letter E. Oh. I just went, I did the exact thing that I, I didn't even realize that was the problem. So take a look at D and E. They're just the reverse. So what that means is I have all my 100 people sitting back in the room. I say, hey, if you like T, stay here. Everyone else, go outside. So how many people like T? That's the 11. Okay, so of those 11 people sitting there of all four of our age groups, those are all the people who like T. Okay, how many people are in the 20 out of 29 category in that case? And that would be 5 out of 11. 
Okay, so notice how D and E are kind of, you flip-flop, you go from want to know what the row is versus what you want to know the column is. Okay, that's a good problem. And letter F. Letter F. Probability, they like coffee such that they are 40 or higher. Okay, 40 or higher is how many groups of people in our study? Two. Two. Yeah, so, so this is going to give us 25 plus 25, because those are both those groups. So it's these two groups that we're worried about, so that my denominator is going to be 50. And then I want to know the probability that those people like coffee. Well, of both those groups, there's 9 plus 8. Okay? which is 17 out of 50. Good questions, my friends. Good questions. Nine? Yeah, let's do number nine. That's a good one. You want to do it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely one that's similar on the test. Um, things that you might notice about the words cherry you have two R's. Mm -hmm. And those R's are going to be the exact same looking tile. There's no difference between the first R and the second R. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so number nine, you have these tiles. Okay, you have these tiles in a bag. Okay, you have six different things. I have six tiles. Okay. So, what is the probability we spell the word exactly like that? So, I'm going to take, I'm going to reach in the bag, grab out one tile, put it down. I'm going to reach in the bag, grab another tile, put it down. So, I'm not replacing. Okay. So, probability I get a C is one out of six. Probability I get an H is 1 out of 5. Why did it just reduce? Yeah, I have less tiles in the bag. And then the probability I grab the E out. Probability I grab the first R out. The first one is going to give me 2, but the second one is going to give me 1 out of 3, or excuse me, 1 out of 2, because I already took 1 out. And then the probability I get the Y is 1 out of 1. Okay, now the easier way to do this, thank you so much for coming in. The easiest way to do this, my friends, is it would be very wise that you try and reduce if there's anything that can reduce first. So I notice I have a two on top and I have a two on bottom there. Okay, I could have reduced anywhere on bottom that was an even number, but I just chose there. So then if I multiply on top, one multiplied times itself six times is one. And then 6 times 5 is 30. 30 times 4 is 120. 120 times 3 is 360. So I have a 1 in 360 chance if I had put these six tiles in a baggie and I, and I shuffled them up and I drew them out one at a time to get all six of them out. In order for me to spell cherry, I have a 1 in 360 chance of that taking place. Okay, so you're saying there's a chance. What else could I help you with on any of the problems? Does anyone want, need to see the Venn diagram? Because you will see one. You want to see it? You got it. So I'm on number 11 on page 215. So we have... Yeah, I'm going to do two different colors. All right. So we have cats, dogs, we have 10 that just have cats, we have 7 that just have dogs, we have 5 that have cats and dogs, and then we have 8 people who don't have cats or dogs. Okay? <clears throat> Before you go anywhere beyond that, um, it doesn't tell us how many people we have, but we could simply find that by going 10 plus 5 is 15, 15 plus 7 is 22, 
22 plus 8 is 30. So I have 30 people that we're talking about, or 30 whatever, okay? All right, so then we want to know for letter A, what is the probability that we pick somebody who likes dogs? Well, there are 30 people total. How many people like dogs? 12. Yeah, it's the whole blue. Even though we have an overlap, that's okay. But if I were to have these 30 people that fed, made this Venn diagram, and I said, and I chose somebody at random out of the group, and said, okay, do you like dogs? And they're like, yeah. There happens to be 12 of them. Okay, letter B. Letter B says the probability they like cats or dogs. Okay. If so it's still gonna be out of the 30 people. I need to include with an or, I need to include the overlap. Okay? Because you can like cats and dogs. So cats and dogs is part of the problem. So I'm going to add 10, 50, or 10, 5, and 7 together, and I have a 22 out of 30 probability that I would find somebody who likes cats or dogs. That includes the people who like cats and dogs, which is that 5 intersection. Letter C. Letter C. What is the probability that I pick somebody who likes cats? not dogs. Okay, I still have the 30 people. How many people just like cats? 10. Ten. It's just the outside of that uh, red region. So I have a 10 and 30 chance. Letter D. What is the probability that somebody likes cats such that they like dogs. Okay. How many people like dogs on our graph? That's 12 people, so that's going to be my denominator. How many people like cats such that they also like dogs? Five. Okay, and then letter E, letter E, what is the probability no cats such that not dogs? Okay. How many people, let's figure out our denominator first. How many not dog people are there? 18, great. We have to include the people who, we have to include these people as well. So it's both of these people. So I'm going to have 18 as a denominator. Okay. So what's the probability I pick somebody who does not like cats and does not like, such that they do not like dogs? That's a tougher one. They don't like dogs, so I agree with the 18. I include the cat people only and the non-cat or dog people. So that gives me the 18. So how many people of that group that I have a check mark next to don't like cats either? Eight. That's it. Good deal. Is there anything else that I can help you with on any of those? Are you okay with the cards or, again, skip the birthday one on 12? Yeah, it kind of goes, okay, so I'm going to do two different bed diagrams, and, and I think this might be able to answer your question. So this can be a Venn diagram. Okay, there's no overlap. Okay, 
but then this, and I'm just doing two circles, and then I can do this. So this is event A, this is event B, this is event A, this is event B, this right here is event A and event B. That's the overlap, okay? This would be mutually exclusive. Okay, some people might even call it, it could be independent, but they both could be independent. Okay, so mutually exclusive means this event here and this event here have nothing to do with each other. So think about in like that top category is I'm rolling a single die and I'm flipping a coin. The coin flip and the die roll have nothing to do with each other. Okay, but if I were to say I had, let's say I had two different die, one was a green one, one was a red one, they're both numbered one through six, and we're just worried about the total, we could have red die, green die, I said red and green, right? Okay. And then I could, and then there could be, um, if I was just worried about the total, I wasn't worried about necessarily the color. Okay? So, to answer your question, if it's an and, you're going to multiply. If it's an or, it's normally going to be an add of a fraction, but you have to be kind of cautious on it. And I don't think I have a trick one on there. Okay. If I do, I'm going to find it before you guys, and I'll say, dude, there's a trick on number 17. And then I'll tell you what the trick is and help you out. Are we all good? Oh, hey. Uh comment for you. We have our quiz tomorrow. So basically that ends our prob stats situation, which means that ends our first semester book. Agree? That means you need to have that second semester book by Monday. Is it five bucks? Is that what it was? Okay. So you all know where to get that book for Monday? If you don't have it? If you don't have it, please bring five bucks on Monday or Venmo or right. do they take Venmo? What what all does the bookstore take? Cash? Do they take credit card? Yeah. Do they take anything else? Do they take Apple Pay? Anyone know? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Or you can always steal your friends' money. Friends, you feel comfortable with this situation? I'm not going to try and throw you any trick questions. Okay, there are a couple that I will cancel out. Does everyone feel good about the uh, the card selection? You will see a problem. The card problem that's on the the test, it'll list out. Remember we had that whole diagram. It had hearts, and it had ace or king, and it had. Diamonds, Acer King, and it had spades, Acer King, and it had clubs, Acer King. It's going to have that whole diagram on there for you. you. And I will let you know that diamonds, I will let you know tomorrow in class, during the test, that diamonds and hearts are red, clubs and spades are black. Okay, just so, because I only printed in black and white. I'm sorry, I didn't go color. I know you wanted fancy, but it just didn't happen. Do what? Yeah, that's number fourteen, right? There was number one. It might be. I don't know. I so forgot what number one was. Oh, okay. Yeah. So problem number one on page two thirteen. Okay. So you have fifty-two cards in the deck. So we have diamonds. Hearts, clubs, and spades. These are black and black. These are red and red. All right, so uh, what is the probability we draw a king out of the deck of cards? There are four kings in the deck. There are 52 cards. You're done. That was A. Letter B. What's the probability I pull a king and a diamond? 
Okay, there's only one king of diamonds in the deck, so that's one out of 52 probability. Letter C, what is the probability of picking a king or a diamond? Okay, this is one that we can't double count. I have 13 diamonds in the deck, which is ace through king. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. Okay, what do I have to make sure I don't do here? I don't want to count the king of diamonds twice. Okay, so that means there's three other kings in the deck. Does that make sense? Normally there are four total kings, but I don't want to double count the king of diamonds. So I've already counted the king of diamonds here. I don't want to count it here. So that gives me a 16 out of 52 probability of that taking place. Letter D. Probability of pulling a red or a spade. Okay. There's 26 red cards in the deck. Agree? Are any of those 26 red cards a spade? No? Okay. So I have 26 red cards, but this has the word or in it, so that means something. Or a spade. How many spades are in the deck? 13. Are any of the spades being double counted with the reds? No. So I have a 39 out of 52 chance of this taking place. And then for letter E, it says probability of pulling a red and a spade. Okay, you're only drawing one card. Can I draw a card out of this deck of cards that's red and also a spade? No. So I have a zero out of 52 chance of that's taking place. Does that make sense? All right, this is recorded. It will be posted uh, on Schoology if you wanted to use that. You get a full sheet of paper. You get to use Desmos. Okay. Does everyone feel comfortable using Desmos as a calculator, or do you know how to use your calculator on your phone? Okay. You know if you turn your phone sideways, it gives you more options on the calculator? Okay. I'm just making sure.